My name is Ethan. It is really an honor to be here speaking with the body of Christ. Before I begin, I would like to share a little, about, a little bit about why I'm sharing today. The beginning of January and my organization needed a place to host an event for a whole bunch of pastors. So I called out Pastor Liu, if I can borrow this place, this very same room, all the pastors were here. And then uh, during the call, Pastor Liu asked me, how is your English? And uh, if I'm willing to speak on a Sunday service in, uh, for your English congregation. And I was shocked because I never preached a service before. This will be my very first time. Uh, I have two Mandarin YouTube channel. One is called Project Hip Christian, and the other one is called AI News. AI is I stand in uh, Chinese. I, I believe everyone knows Chinese here, right? What your parents does. Project Hip Christian is mostly about the Bible, and we use historical evidence in American history to explain the Bible. And AI News is mostly about current events, so uh, and how Christian should look at our world today with the biblical point of view, with the Bible interpreted how the current event affect us. So when I got the memo from Pastor Liu, the very first thing that came to my mind was, no, who am I to uh, speak on stage? And uh, of course not. Who am I to te preach God's words in front of anyone? I mean, a YouTube video is one thing because uh, I can write a script. Believe it or not, it's, it's still scripted right here. But if I said something wrong, it is actually okay because I can just edit it out in productions. And so I hesitated for a second and then I said yes because all of a sudden, I remember a couple verses. That is Exodus 4, 10 to 14. Can anyone help me to read this part? Hi, can, can, can you help me to read it? Because my voice is uh, amazing today. I, I like to keep it for a while. Exodus 4, 10 to 14. Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord. I, never, I have never been eloquent either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow to speech and tongue. The Lord said to him, Who gave human beings their mouths? Who, made, who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, Pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses and he said, What about your brother Aaron the Levite? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you, and he will be glad to see you. Yeah, so everyone should be very familiar with this passage. And uh, in these verses, it told us that we are created in the image of God. And he said what he created was good. So if we look down on ourselves, that means we're concerned about God's creation and uh, God's decisions in our life. So on the call with Pastor Liu, I have to say yes even though I never preached in front of a crowd before, even though I'm scared right now, and uh, I have no idea why. If you look uh, on the side way, you can see my leg shaking. I'm so nervous right now. But I need to take up this challenge because that's what God wanted, and He wanted the best for me. And uh, with His help, He will help me to write a sermon, and He will help me to speak with the body of Christ, and He will teach me what to say today. So, today's topic is Call of Duty. It is one of the best-selling games for the past 20 years. I started playing when I was middle school. I don't play anymore because I have a beautiful family. You saw my wife and my two kids, uh, two amazing daughters. But I am not here to talk about the game. I'm here to speak about our duty, called by God to spread the gospel, called by God to lead the world to salvation, called by God to follow Jesus, in other words, called to be a Christian. If you look at this chart, this is a statistic. Being a Christian is very hard today. Uh, who here hide the fact that you're a Christian in your daily lives? If the answer is yes, then you are not alone. According to Pew Research, there's a switch in the United States among young population between the age of 15 to 29, 
31% of Americans who were raised Christian become religiously unaffiliated. These groups become later atheist or agnostic or those who describe their faith as nothing in particular. Anyone who would be like, oh, I used to go to church, but then, uh, you know, in college, you know, I just stopped. Anyone know someone like that? Yeah. So for the past 15 years, adults who identified as Christian in this study, it includes all kinds of Christians, not just me and you, normal Christian. It, it also includes like Mormons and uh, Jehovah's Witness, Scientology, and uh, those uh, snake playing churches in the middle of Kentucky, that kind of Christian. Yeah, uh, the number of Christians who kept their faith, their belief, after 30 dropped by 15% from uh, 78 to 63. Because being a Christian is extremely hard these days, especially in California. We are under a lot of pressure. Our school is focusing uh, our kids to accept homosexuality. Our public library have drag queen story hours. LA Zoo last month have a family-friendly drag show which display nudity in front of underage kids, all in the name of tolerance and diversity. And because of all these are happening, there are many churches, I'm talking about many, many churches. They adopted the viewpoint of the world. They changed their teaching of the Bible to compensate on what the world want. And uh, this is uh, the next is a video. It's a drag queen story hour on the altar of a Lutheran church. So with many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and I'd like to invite any children or people who would like to see a picture book that I will be showing on the iPad here. Anyone who'd like a closer view of that to come up and sit. Um, um, come up and sit somewhere on the ground here. I have an awesome story to share with you today. I'm really excited to share it with you. I have a question first though. Have any of you ever seen a drag queen? Yeah. No? No, is this, so this is everybody's first time they're ever seeing a drag queen? Well, hello. Um, I am also a boy most of the time when I'm here, but today I am <laughs> here <laughs> today. Yes, beautiful. So, the story that I want to share with you today is called Joy. Does everybody know, what, is, what does joy mean to you? It's shocking, right? Can you believe that's a pastor up there speaking to the kids? And they're targeting children too. Down there, they're all children. And it's their children's ministry. This is a church who conformed to the world, twisted God's teaching, and telling our kids that Man can become woman, and woman can become men, and teach our, uh, that ch Christian should accept their sexual fantasies, brainwash our kids, all in the name of diversity and tolerance. And now here's another uh, example of Methodist church taking, talking about uh, Roman 12, uh, the second verse. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but to be transformed by renewing your minds. This is what many of our churches has become. Do you have any questions for Ms. Pentecost? I like your eyeshadow. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you like her eyeshadow. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she'll let you borrow it when I you're older, like when you're this. allowed to wear makeup. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the things I think is great about Ms. Pentecost is she reminds us that we, we follow a God who calls us to not conform to things of this world. Uh, that we're supposed to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. And that means that what I think today may have to change tomorrow if I continue to renew my mind. And it's so cool that we serve a God that calls us to continue to grow and continue to, to change into something new uh, and to not be bound by the ways that the world confines us sometimes, that, that we're supposed to live differently. Is, is it shocking? If I see my pastor do that, I'll, I'll go crazy. And of course, those messages are not the message of the Bible. And then, uh, and of course, these teaching are inside our public school. He's a pastor too. And then uh, he wrote a poem about how God is not real. 
I don't know how he got his degree. But that's the messages that they are teaching in our public school, our colleges, our universities. A lot of churches are beginning to bow down to the world. Our enemy have taken over our education system, our government system, and they are here to destroy families. So, of course, we are scared. Of course, we are afraid. Of course, we want to hide our identity because that kind of thing is everywhere and even at, in churches. So of course, we want to act like we are just as acceptance. We are just as tolerance. We Christian are just like the world. We don't want to hurt anyone's feeling. But here's the question. Is that what Jesus did? Circle back to that. So I've been reporting news for about two and a half years. And I got to tell you something. God is working right now. And the community is shifting and God is stirring up his follower, all these Bible loving Christian. Any one of you remember Operation Rescue? Probably not. I'm so, God, really make me feel like I'm from a different era. Yeah. Well, if you guys are not familiar with it, here's a video from the early 90s attracted more than 500 people representing both sides of the abortion debate. Ron Olson reports. Members of Operation Rescue showed up to block the front and rear entrances of a clinic on Westmoreland at 6th. They were met by a number of pro-choice advocates and the LAPD, who gave it some time and then announced that the Operation Rescue demonstrators would have to move out or be arrested for trespassing. I talked to the people who control the property and they signed a crime report, which then makes it mandatory for us to make arrests. And uh, we, once we got enough uh, troops here, we began, we began making arrests and uh, cleared uh, the people who were trespassing in front and in the rear, so now both doors are open. About 250 officers, including a mounted patrol, were called in. Most were charged with trespassing, but police say a small number were charged with battery, and one was charged with conspiracy, as he appeared to be an organizer. Now, with all of that, was there a clear winner in this battle? I feel confident there are no abortions being performed at this time. And our goal is to save babies from being killed. We have one woman that we're counseling right now who's changed her mind not to have a baby killed. So I think it's been a terrible, terrible failure for them. Um, they haven't stopped a single woman from getting an abortion. They haven't closed a single clinic. Uh, they've, their numbers are down. Uh, their national leadership doesn't know what to do. They quit on them, and the new leadership seems to be in total disarray. Streets were blocked, the doors to the clinic were temporarily blocked, and protesters were hauled away by the busload. No so that was the late ladies and early 90s. And now many, many more Christians are getting arrested every day because of protests in front of abortion clinic. You see, uh, there was a, a Catholic priest, and then the FBI went to his house with 25 FBI agents, guns strong, and then arrested him because he protests uh, at the, in front of an abortion center. All these protests, even silently praying in front of a sidewalk of an abortion center, is illegal now. Here's a video of a British woman praying on the sidewalk. She was also arrested. What, what are you here for today? Uh, physically, I'm just standing here. Okay, why, why here of all places? I know you, you don't live nearby. This is an abortion center. You're praying? I, I might be praying in my head. Um, so I'll, I'll ask you once more, will you voluntarily come with us now to the police station for me to ask you some questions about today and other days where there are allegations that you've broken the public space station? Uh, if I've got a choice, then no. Okay, well then you're under arrest, the class suspicion of failing to comply with the public space's protection order. Which you... Okay, so we're thinking that something is wrong with that picture of a, a British woman who silently pray on the sidewalk of an abortion center. We're thinking something's wrong. We're here to save babies. And now we're getting brutalized by the government that was supposed to protect these babies. And now they're looking at us like we are criminals and attacking us, arresting us. So a lot of us decided that we don't just want to fight the city hall. We want to become the city hall, become the congressman, become state assembly and get into our school board. So for the past two years, I've met with a lot of Christians who ran for office, who are still running for office. They're saying that they're going to stand up and they are gonna get in there, get into our uh, government 
and not only save our country from our self-destruction, but also save the life of these babies. Because Christian's hard work in the 80s, we finally overturned Roe v. Wade. It's like abortion is a state's power. So because of all these prayer and all these passionate Christian who are not scared, we can achieve something extraordinary. And if you ask them, was it easy? No. Was there a fight? Yes. But we can do the same thing. We don't have to be scared of the society. We, we can transform our community. And it all began with the theology of transformation. Uh, these are the people that I know and I work with during the last uh, election cycle. You've probably seen their name around here. Uh, probably Eric Chin or uh, Mitch Clayman. They are all Christian and they're all Bible loving guy who just want to get into our government and want to change things up. So let me tell you with the word of God, if you have your Bible, please turn the page to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 21. There's a law signed by our uh, governor Newsom. I don't know if you guys are following it. In LA County, which is here, one of the most significant controversy is that they want to relocate sex offender out of jail and into local neighborhood. Do you guys like that? No, no, right? No, right? Oh, especially those who are women and parents with girls. I have to tell you something. I am not okay with this. Well, then what do you do with these guys? If you found out that there's somebody like that, that is going to assign to your neighborhood, what are you going to react? I don't know about you guys. And of course I will react. We call this NIMBY. Does anyone know what it is? NIMBY. Really? Wow. Oh, thank you. Not in my backyard. Okay, same era. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see the great right here. Yeah, NIMBY. And today I'm going to let you know, NIMBY is a biblical concept. And that's what I want to turn you guys into. No, so that is today's message. We want you to commit to your community. And today I'm going to give you a little warning. What happened if you don't? So what an interesting passage here. It shows how God look at you, how God look at me, how God look at us, every single one, how God look at the world. There's someone, there's a victim. Nobody know who he is. He seems to be have forgotten. I mean, there's a dude out there, right there, okay? Who just got killed out in the field. No one knows him, but God didn't forget about him because God never forget. God was there and God do not forget. So what happened was the blood guilt was attributed to the city that is nearest to the crime scene. So the Lord required that city closest to the crime scene to be morally responsible. So what does God do? He requires a pretty significant sacrifice. Okay. I mean, a heifer is not an insignificant sacrifice to uh, Jewish culture. So God is saying something. God is saying something. We got to do something. They got to do something. The city had to do something. There's got to be death for death and blood for blood. And there's got to be justice. God requires them to do a ritual. They need to go into a valley with flowing water, neither was plowed or sown. And then, so it's got to be a clean place. It cannot be downtown Los Angeles or Hollywood, you know, those fentanyl and uh, those uh, used needles where terrible things happen and then uh, with full of human contam contamination. And who else supposed to show up? Uh, the priest <clears throat> supposed to show up and the uh, priest supposed to be there to affirm and bless in the name of the Lord. But no, notice who else is supposed to be there? The civil elder. So yeah, in the Bible, we do believe in the separation of church and state in a way. The civil elder are, have responsibility and the Le 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 Levitical leaders also have responsibility. And they're different and they're very, they work very different. So they can call a scene in the issue of justice. So that the civil authority have to do something. They have to raise their right hand and in front of God and say, we have no idea what is going on. We have no idea what happened here. We didn't see it. We didn't know what happened. And therefore we ask mercy for the Lord.
But、uh, did the civil authority in your community do that? Did the did your pastor do that? Did they raise their right hand and say that they don't know what happened? They have no idea about all these sin and corruption that's taking place in our city, in our jurisdiction. That that really convicted me as a Christian. And here are the abortion clinic in Hacienda Height, Roland Height, Diamond Bar, and Walnut. Over there, they're murdering babies. I I, I can't take that oath. I can't say I don't know what's going on there, because I know exactly what's going on there, over there. I know exactly what happened. Planned Parenthood,、uh, Family Planning Associate—they're murdering babies. They do it every Wednesday and every Saturday. And a truck come and、uh, they take the baby's body out, put it on the truck, and take them to send to a、uh, burn as、uh, medical waste. For electricity, the things that you use at home, we're burning our baby's body to power up our light, our city light. So,、uh, we need to do something. Depends on where you live. We need to do something. You can submit a request to a city hall. You can talk to your pastor, ask him to file a complaint because we know that we are going to be responsible for this. If we are called to do something as Christian, we need to do more than just pray, and we need to put our prayers into actions. So here's an article. Here's three article.、Uh, the first article is about a Christian church、uh, stop federal funding into their local Planned Parenthood. Christians are fighting back. Okay, more than 60 religious leader gather up together and stop federal funding for Planned Parenthood. We want that case. And、uh, more babies in that area get to live another day. And then in the middle, here's a Christian biker who started a Bikers for Life.、Uh, their slogan is "We ride with Jesus Christ into the, these dark places for the victories of life." In the article, it says Tom and his biker friend pray at the Planned Parenthood nearby on Saturday as a group. And there, during the week,、uh, most of them,、uh, most of these men work full time. And then、uh, they give their time because it makes a difference, and because their actions matter. And then、uh, this pastor, Jerry、uh, Cass, his name is Jerry Cass.、Uh, we met at one of the events. He ran for office and in the school board and city council. Because of him and his、uh, the work of his colleague, right now, the、uh, East San Diego County is abortion center free. The whole county. Abortion center free, and he said that the county become abortion center free because we know we're going to be accountable for this. Not only the pastor, not only the elder, but all the Christian. We are responsible for everything that is happening to our cities. So we have theology drive into our activism. People get excited with every election cycle. We get motivated, but know this: this is not an emotional thing, and this is not a political thing. This is a moral thing. This is a spiritual thing. This is ethical. We need to be involved, whether we feel like it or not. I certainly hope you guys feel like it. I mean, you guys are so young. I hope you guys、uh, want to save your、uh, friends too. Just like all the Christians、uh, that ran for office, we're going to win some, we're going to lose some, and the road in front of us is full of challenges. But we still have to fight because proximities matter. Whether you want it to be true or not, what happened to in your community will impact you, for good or for ill, for blessing or for curses. Okay. <laughs> Now I'm going to tell you why you need to care. Why you need to do something? During World War II, in Nazi Germany, there were Christians, a lot of Christian. They got brutalized by Hitler, according to the preacher Martin Niemöller. In his poem in、uh, 1945, most Christians just pray and stood by. Okay. Later he wrote, first they came for the communists. I did not speak out because I'm not a communist. 
Then they came for the socialist. I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionist. I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews. I did not speak out because I'm not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there's no one left to speak for me. So when the ally came, in the end, when they dropped bomb onto Germany to end the war, end the war, guess what? A lot of religious German Christian died because they did nothing to stop a madman, and indirectly helped him to create a mad neighborhood and created a mad country. So, whether we want to face it or not, we live in California. So we are responsible for what happened in California. We live in this community, and we are responsible for this community. So if there are abortion clinic, if there is sex trafficking, if there are violence, if there is there there are drugs, if we are not standing up as God's people, we are still going to get the consequences, whether we face it or not. And we do know where the injustice is. It is coming right out of Sacramento. We know where the wickedness is, and it's happening、uh, even with our own community, with all these LGBTQ plus propaganda forcing down our children. They change the fundamental understanding of marriage. It's all these sexual revolution. Now we can tell we can tell men from women and women from men. All these Marxist talk. Doctrinating, undermining our Christian value. So let me just conclude right here. It took Christians and Christian worldview to create a nation, not a perfect nation, but a nation that provided more freedom, more liberty, and more prosperity and more blessing for more people than any other nation in the world. That is just a fact. And it took a Christian to start it. And it took a Christian, took Christians to die for it, to bleed for it. It is going to take Christians to reclaim it. So, it all starts with you. We are the only one with this fundamental、uh, foundation to appeal to. This is our patrimony. This is our heritage. This is our stewardship. This is our duty to pass on to our children and our children's children. But by God's grace. Do we have the courage and the willingness to do it? So, here's my charge to you: Let us pray to God to give you your community. We need to start one community at a time, and to take back California, one election cycle at a time, one community at a time, one family at a time, and we're standing firm with the truth of Jesus Christ and standing and stand and bear witness to the truth, because it is your duty. And it is to the glory of God. It is our duty to be a Christian and follow Jesus Christ. And of course, we are scared, just like those people who got arrested, like that woman silently praying in front of abortion center. They are dangerous. And it's just like in the beginning when Pastor Liu asked me, "How is your English? Are you willing to do a Sunday service for the English congregation?" I know I am not enough. I know I have no experience at all. But I am burning for justice. I'm burning for righteousness, and I want to protect my wife, my life, and、uh, my family, my, my my kids, and most of all, I want to protect what belongs to God. And I I know God loves to work with people, and working with Him brings triumph over our enemy. So, and this is our call of duty to fall to fight alongside. Our Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you, everyone.